Today, I'm gonna to take you behind the scenes on a live consultation sales call with a prospect for my consulting business. In this video, you're gonna see me run him through my analysis process where I run him through all the opportunities and all the issues that I found on their website with their content marketing, social media, email, paid traffic, everything. You're gonna see my simple process for recording my notes in Notion and just hitting them one by one. This is how I close six-figure deals without a proposal and on only one or two phone calls. Anyone in the B2B space, but especially you agents and consultants are going to want to watch this so you can understand how to close large deals in a lot less time. Let's get into it. The point of this call, you know, if we move forward to work together, there's going to be a number of conversations. This is the first of, of a couple, just to make sure, you know, projects like this need to get fully scoped out. I do have a bunch of thoughts. I'm just going to kind of run you through them in terms of what I found. So let me just share my screen. It was a little bit challenging because it doesn't look like you guys have done a whole ton of marketing. So there wasn't a whole lot for me to audit which is yeah. fine. But really what that means is that there's a lot of opportunity. So got all these things just broken down here in Notion. I'll just kind of run you through them one by one, really much more of a conversation than anything. So if you have questions, just stop me. We'll we'll dive yeah. a little bit deeper as we get through it. So I started with the the website. So how long have you guys had this this version of the website? Probably two years. Okay, cool. Is it on WordPress? Do you know what it's built on by any chance? I believe it is WordPress, yeah. Okay, cool. So you know, my, my initial thoughts on it is that there's, it's just very thin in terms of the content that is, needs to be built out and developed, which I'm sure, you know, you probably heard content, content a million times. You're going to hear me say it a million more times today. So in terms of that aside though, too, just some small things, again, this is a very, very high level audit, just overall kind of copy and overall messaging, I think could use, especially me as an outsider, right? I actually had to do some research yeah. on what RIs were and what the difference between that and a financial planner was. Just the overall messaging, I think there's a easy room for improvement there in terms of picking up more conversions of what's already happening and just in regards to the copy. I am a big fan and a big proponent in really an enemy to be space is focusing on problems and pain points, right? So when it comes to an RIA, something that I do with a lot of my clients, really the first thing I do is go through this basically pain point diagnostic where we just sit down and we literally just flush out everything that they do on a daily basis, what problems they're having, what they're searching for, what kind of content they're consuming. And from there, we just kind of reconstruct messaging a little bit that just pops off the screen. So this copy, a fortune favors the bold, beyond the efficient frontier. If I come here, especially me, who is new mm -hmm. eyeballs to this, it needs to pop and I need to understand exactly what it is that you guys do right away. So just kind of overall, I think there's room for improvement in terms of just conversion-based copywriting. Again, like problem-focused copywriting in terms of digging out and speaking to what those core problems are. And that also really ties into everything when it comes to content too, which we'll talk a little bit, like to focus on problems and speak to those. So like I have some just kind of notes that I put here, right? So the fortune favor is a bold one too. I don't know if you know this, it was on the commercial with Matt Damon for for the, what was it, Bitcoin or something, whatever it was. So it just kind of, it always reminds me of that one too. I would just yeah, yeah. <laughs> change that copy up a little bit. And then going into here, right? So really the why. Why are RA users in the platform? Is it for speed, for efficiency, to make better investment decisions automatically, to make their clients more money, to get a competitive edge of the market, right? We really want to kind of focus on what these different problems are, these different pain points, and really that why. And then just drill that, right? Really, again, going back into a lot of software companies too, they like to lead with features. This is what we do. This is how we can help. We use AI, we automate this and that. It's really about them. It's always about the customer and specifically, again, those problems and pain points. So we always wanna try and align messaging really at the brand level to those yeah. less about like what we can help you do and more about, hey, you're an RIA, we're here for you whatever your problems are, this platform was built to help you solve those things. So we want to just drill into those a little bit more on the messaging side of you. Just some other small things about like auto playing the videos and then also building out more specific landing pages for features, right? You pretty much go to any major software site and they're going to have, so you guys kind of have them a little bit here on your portfolios, right? But just blowing these out and focusing more on, from this point of view, we'll talk more about SEO, but these are the ones that we want to focus on keywords in search because people are searching for that functionality without knowing what your brand is and what you do and what your product does, right? They're not going to be searching for the product name unless they are already aware of you guys and all the way down the marketing funnel. I'll show you in a graphic about that in a second. 
But again, these ones are want to be much more high level and focused on really construct around keywords, which we'll just do research to kind of figure out what those keywords are and then build out specific landing pages, talking about the features and functionality of the platform targeting those keywords. You have a question on that? Okay. Okay, cool. Just more pages too on like reviews and results. You had mentioned that you guys are doing very well. Are you capturing reviews anywhere? Or like Captera, G2, any of those platforms? Well, there's recent, SU, the SEC would not allow a, a portfolio manager to have financial advisor reviews on their site because that ruling has just changed uh, with legal and our compliance teams to figure out what we can and do there. But okay. We can post our results that speak for themselves, but it can't be like, hey, I'm, you know, Ted Smith from Nashville and I use UX and they're great. You know, we can't do that. Interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> you think it'd be helpful, actually. Okay, so that's fair. And then, you know, just more content on blogging resources. I did a, a crawl of the website here so you can kind of see all the pages that are on it just to give you kind of great. visual. Very thin, not a ton of content. There is some blog content, some posts on there. But over here is the word count, right? You can see a lot of these are sub 500. 500 would be like the minimum that you want to do for like a blog post. And I'm not the type of person either that like gives strict guidelines about blog content. I think it needs to be much more mapped to what the customer is actually looking for. But just on a general basis, blog content is going to be used mainly for SEO performance, right? That's what Google ranks. The meatier, the longer form the content, the better it usually perform, performs. So again, just building out the kind of the, the structure and the navigation, the support pages and the content and building that all is, is a big part of success. So that's the website stuff. Again, very high level audit. I didn't get access to analytics, but just judging based on it, I'm assuming there's probably not a ton of activity in there anyways, which I should ask too. I mean, your primary source of leads right now, it's coming from, you said referrals? Referrals up to this point, we just engaged a company called Level Up that does like LinkedIn campaigns. And okay, cool. You know, we're getting five people raise their hand a month. It's nothing major, but. Okay. So like some inbound, outbound style. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you guys have a sales, do you have a BDR or anybody that's helping out? Yeah. Or an SDR? We, have a, okay. we have a sales person. Okay, cool. So the next one up is content. Again, this is to beat a dead horse. I mean, content, I know we spoke about this on the first call initially too, but content is everything in, in this type yeah. of space. The main goal here is to really position your people, your staff as thought leaders in the space, right? When it comes to investment advisors, we want them to look at UX wealth as a source of information, a source of education, a source of engagement. It says potentially entertainment, depending on the type of content that we push forward. But content is like a very loaded word. And a lot of times it gets misconstrued by companies in terms of the scope of what that content looks like. So I'm just gonna kind of flush this out as we go through this. Content is not something that I attack as a one alone thing, content's really the glue. Content is what you need for LinkedIn, whatever you're doing on LinkedIn, it's what you need for the blog, you know, a podcast, maybe YouTube content, ad content, content is really that glue. And I have a very specific system that I use that allows you to focus on content topics, which stems from customer problems, right? So again, we start with this problem identification process, we blow it out, I can show you some examples of deliverables from the past with clients, just to give you some context in a moment. But and I formulate these kind of like topic clusters, right? Once we have those topic clusters, then from there, we take an objective step back and say, what's the best method and medium to create this and distribute this? Is this a, like a podcast topic? Is this a video that we could do for YouTube? And we'll talk about that in a second. Or should this just be a blog post? Because there's keyword data showing that people are searching for it. Right. So okay. I create this basically like content map that basically takes care of all the brand's content in one document. It's really, really, really powerful. So again, it could be in, I'll get into what I would suggest, but just to kind of hit it real quick in terms of the, the distribution channels or the mediums that I recommend for everyone. Number one is blog content. That's so you can rank in organic search, pick up some easy inbound traffic and leads. Number two would be audio if possible to create some sort of podcast like the RIA's yeah. mentorship podcast, something like that. And then video content for YouTube because that video content then can also be used for ads. It can be used for LinkedIn videos is, is really, really impactful. Obviously it's just, creating it can be a bit of a challenge in terms of getting the right person or the right resources in place to get it done. But it's really, really, really the best way to build a mode around the business, because I'm sure that nobody in the space is probably doing it. And if they are, they're probably not doing it very well. <clears throat> True. But I kind of love industries like this because in marketing, you know, there's a million people doing what I'm doing, you know, videos and all this different stuff. Yeah. But 
when you get into industries like this, there's a major just blue ocean opportunity to really attack these types of things, you know, if, if, if the company's in the right mindset to do that. So yeah. kind of mentioned this seems overwhelming, you know, all the content that you can think about that you need to create, but it really is achievable with the right strategy. And I talked about the topic clusters and really focusing on, I like to do everything in kind of 90 day sprints. I, I find that my business is kind of moving in 90 day increments anyways, in terms of quarterly and growth and stuff like that. So I like to put together a content strategy every 90 days for like 10 topics and those 10 topics, then figure out how we're going to build the right content off the back of that and this video, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that's something that we'd work hands on with depending on resources. And I'll talk about that as we get through that. So that's content. Then we get into organic search a little bit here. Organic search is always a really good opportunity in these types of spaces. I really kind of bucket as organic search SEO into three high level buckets. Number one is technical. So website structure, website speed. You guys have a small website. It's not really something that you need to spend a lot of resources on, but website content. And then also basically like PR. I saw that you guys have done some PR in the past. Yeah. Uh, so you guys on like newswire and stuff like that. That's great. Are you guys, is that an active thing or was that a one-time thing that you guys did? No, it's, it's active. Yeah. We've, we've engaged a PR company to get us in, to get Kyle, who's the CEO, get him interviewed. And okay. How has that been turning out for you guys? Are you guys keeping a close eye on that? No, okay. no, honestly, I think, you know, every two months or so he's featured in something, but it's not as regular as I was hoping it would be. Do you know how much you're paying for that per month or how you're paying that? I think it's five, four to five grand a month. Okay. Okay. PR is, is very, very powerful when done right. But one of the things that I often end up doing with my clients is whipping PR companies in shape because yeah. they... I'm on a recorded line, but they're usually full of shit. I mean that in the nicest way possible. But from a search point of view, it's very, very impactful when done, right? Because those signals in terms of getting featured on other websites, Google basically looks at it like a popularity contest. Mm -hmm. You know, Business Week is talking about your business, then oh, you make you're at the cool kids table. So we'll you kind of rising tide raises all ships, if you will. So mm -hmm. It really is about building the right content and then just whipping the PR company in shape to make sure that you're getting featured. Again, I do this with a lot of my consultant clients. I work just directly with the PR company. It usually just takes a couple of conversations to be like, hey, we have somebody here who's not focused on this. We're gonna be holding you to these metrics, these standards. I usually set like a price per placement that we'd wanna to get to, usually around mm -hmm. a couple hundred dollars. And then we just hold their feet to the coals. And if they don't get it done, yeah, like on somebody else. And that I mentioned here about like G2 and Captera, that might not be uh, an option, but still those types mm -hmm. of signals, if possible, are always good things as well. So we're getting search paid. So you guys are not currently doing any paid from what I could see. Is that correct? Except for well, I ran like something on Google, just a really small test run. And we get, I don't think we've ever gotten a client that has directly said, hey, I saw an ad, but we have a couple competitors and I did, uh, I think it's 500 bucks a month is our ad spend. It's nothing big. I was just yeah. saying what would happen. And okay. I set it up. It was just kind of janky, I'm sure, but yeah. just to see what results we would get. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of paid traffic. We've, mm -hmm. I mean, for my three companies, we're running about $75,000 a month in paid traffic yeah. across Facebook and YouTube. For you guys specifically, I would say you guys did, which is AdWords, right? Google ads. What I really love about AdWords is twofold is number one, it's, it's, the best direct response advertising tactic that there is. And we'll talk a little bit more about goals in a second, but usually for the most part, the clients that I work with, their main focus is, is leads. And, and really, yeah. I shouldn't say leads qualified pipeline, right? Not wasting your sales team's time. Paid searches is, is the fastest way to do that, but it does come at a cost because it does cut into your margins and it's only scales to a certain point because there's only so many keywords that you can kind of get there. But the really thing that I love about paid search is that it informs organic search, right? So we set up a strategy where a couple thousand dollars a month bidding on these keywords, building qualified pipeline, and then the keywords that are turning into qualified pipeline, we then push back into organic search and create content around it organically. And we call it a blended search approach, right? So we try and taper down that or that paid spend as we build up the organic. And once that organic is built up, we can pretty much turn off the paid search ads. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So again, I would suggest a very limited spend there, really even before any SEO work is done, just the testability of the keywords, because there's a ton of research that we would want to do in terms of understanding what keywords people are searching for. But I would, just from the research that I've done, I found that this is probably going to be a pretty limited search space, right? Yeah. There's not a ton of volume around it. So 
we wouldn't want to spend a ton of resources there, but just to kind of build that baseline, set it, you can kind of automate paid search in a way too. Once you get the ads up and running and dialed in, you monitor them once a month. I've got people that do that very well. Email is the next one. I actually opted into the newsletter on the website. Email is something that's always overlooked by companies, but really, again, in a space like this, email is incredibly important because what it allows us to do is really build a list of qualified people. Like if you join the list, we know you're an RA. And that in itself is incredibly valuable because over time that list piles up. And then again, like what I said, I like to do every quarter as I make offers to my email list in terms of call. So currently I got this email. Uh, and again, everything I'm saying here, by the way, is not, I hate doing these kind of teardowns because I, I oh, hate no, this is okay. what I do. but uh, the emails like this, what we want to do is again, emails are part of content marketing, right? So the emails mm -hmm. that we want to send, we want to, the goal here, right? If somebody's on your email list, it's because again, they're qualified. We know they're an RA, but they're probably not ready to become a client. So what we want to do is we want to focus on nurturing that, that lead, that prospect into actually becoming a qualified lead. And we do that through content. So all the content that we create from podcasting, from blog posting, we just basically retranslate it to email, build some automations, and then drift that out to those folks over time. And then again, monthly, quarterly, we'll send out special offers to book a call, you know, basically with this different special promos to the email list. So again, the one that's going out now, this is the most common thing I see with a lot of B2B companies too, is mainly they use it for company announcements. And again, when we understand, I'm gonna show you this graphic because I don't know if I showed you this last time, but it's one of my favorite graphics. This is referring to copy specifically, but it really, did I show you this last time we talked? No. So, for you. Okay, cool. There's a book, it's from 1966. It's called Breakthrough Advertising by a guy named Eugene Schwartz. 500 bucks on Amazon right now. Um, crazy expensive, but it's one of the most impactful books ever when it comes to marketing and advertising. And really, you can just focus on this section here. But these are what he calls the five stages of awareness. And what you see down here is most aware, product aware, solution aware, problem aware, unaware, right? So a lot of companies focus their marketing here they make the assumption that people are already aware, they're product aware and they're solution aware. They know what you do and they know what your product and service is, right? So that's why you see a lot of companies pushing out stuff like company announcements or feature pushes and feature updates. Yeah. But in reality, most people are not down here. They're all the way up here, right? They're yeah. unaware of who you are. And more specifically, they care about themselves. People are very predictable, you know, especially when we're talking about marketing at scale, people are very predictable. They don't care about you until you've properly identified that problem that they have. So you, again, you'll hear me say problems and, and anxieties a lot because people care about themselves and they're self-interested and we want to speak to them, not us. So it's a big thing with content again, especially with B2B companies, they create content about themselves, but people don't care about you until they're ready to care about you, right? And that's why so much messaging is so important. Content is so important because we want to focus on these benefits and anxieties that people are having, these RAs are having on a daily basis that's how we get them off social media, right? People, again, will just push product updates when it's like, no, we need to be talking to them about them and what's keeping them up at night and creating content around them to help them solve that. And then we earn the right to introduce our solution, right? And then we earn the right to introduce our product. And then we earn the right to have them become a qualified sales lead. Yeah. And yeah. this right here, this graphic, I mean, it's, it's super simple, but it really explains so much of why B2B companies struggle yeah, because yeah. they just go right for the jugular and people are like, no, I'm not really, I'm not yeah, really interested well, who in that. Cares? Yeah, exactly. So email would be another part of this, right? I call it micro, this stands for micro call to action. You know, you go to my websites, we've got things for like, I saw you guys have some stuff up there about webinars. I think that's like a great micro call to action to get people's emails. We set yeah. up some regular email, regular webinars like that. We could even push it live on LinkedIn. I think that would be a good place, things like that. We'll talk about that in a second in terms of content creation, because that's always the X factor with these campaigns. Getting to social media, again, I saw LinkedIn was pretty much the only platform that you guys had a profile on. I also saw that you got just small things like you always want to upload videos directly to the platform. You guys were posting it to Vimeo. What happens is the LinkedIn, any social media algorithm sees an outside link and they're like, no, 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 we don't want to push eyeballs there. We want to keep attention in LinkedIn. So very small things, again, when it comes to like social media strategies is using the platforms natively because LinkedIn wants to keep people in LinkedIn. They don't want to push people to Vimeo. They lose money. Twitter wants to keep people on Twitter. Facebook wants to keep people on Facebook all the way down the line. So <clears throat> it can be a challenge because then it becomes more platforms to manage. But that's also why, you know, I help to simplify things and just say, you know, the accounts that, that your company needs, LinkedIn, right? Twitter kind of for support and kind of announcements and stuff like that, but also to engage in customers, 
and YouTube. Those are like the three big ones where you're going to have the most success in terms of actually getting in front of new people. And then really just Facebook and Instagram just to run remarketing ads. So I didn't really put too much about remarketing in here because I see that as like a phase two or three thing down the line. Build the attention, build the awareness, and then we start to remarket to people on Facebook and Instagram with remarketing ads. Easy way to pick up some some qualified pipeline off that. Um, so do you have any questions on that? That's like a very high level kind of plan of attack. No, oh, Ryan, it all makes a lot of sense. Thanks for thanks for putting some time into this. For sure. So I have kind of a plan of attack just laid out after this. It's got some pricing on here. I just it's not final. I just kind of want to give you an idea for what it would cost yeah. you to attack some of these things. And honestly, uh, really, this is mostly for context. What I would strongly suggest that we do is we just start with a simple strategy. So we get all these things aligned. I go through everything in your marketing, talk with your salespeople, and really build a cohesive strategy before you start throwing a lot of money at something. So we really build a plan of attack before that. So in terms of a holistic digital strategy, something like that, for me to do that would be about $15,000 takes 30 days or less for me to do it. That's me personally, not my team. I do all the strategies myself. So we do things like define the channels and platforms, define any ad spend, define content strategy, the scope of the content, the roles needed to. That's another big conversation would be all this. Like if you're really serious about doing marketing, you don't have anyone who's currently in-house doing marketing, correct? Nobody dedicated, no. dedicated to marketing. No. I would pretty much insist that if you wanted to me to help out with stuff that we hire a full-time content person in right. in-house internally, it's going to save you a ton of money in the long run, because if you wanted an agency to create the content for you, it's going to cost five times the amount. Yeah. Also you lose on the messaging, you lose out on the internal conversations that is important to your CEO. That's important to your sales team. As an agency person, I can tell you this bluntly, like agencies are good for some things. They're not good for, <laughs> they're not good to be a part of your core business, right? An agency should be work overflow strategy, you know, filling in the holes that you don't currently have. So then I have stuff also like website messaging and UX. Again, these are things that we could all do for you. I've got amazing yeah. copywriters, designers, et cetera, full content strategy. We could handle all your content writing. I've got amazing writers, stuff like that. And these would all be one-time costs too. And then if we were to go into, for example, like what I really push my clients to do is to hire somebody. And then I basically manage that person. So it's not something you have to worry about. And then we just go on a monthly consulting agreement. And then I, we could also do your media buying, all your Facebook ads, all your Google ads, stuff like that. But again, I don't want to get caught up in all this stuff down here because this to me is the one thing that you'd really want to focus on first. We get that defined. And then yeah. we can start having more intelligent conversations about what the scope of this would really, really look like and what the total investment would look like over what time, expected returns, KPIs, goals, people that you need, et cetera. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. I don't want to be repetitive or waste your time. I, I think Kyle, this would resonate with him. I'd like you to meet him at some point. Mm -hmm. because Absolutely. We both agree. I was kind of tasked with trying to figure this out and find the person that could help us with this, but I, I would want him to kind of see this plan of attack as well. And and if you wouldn't mind maybe taking it. Yeah, a hundred percent. What you just went over with me with him. A hundred percent. I recorded this too, so I can send him the the recording if he wants to take a look. Yeah. Just for, for some context. But yeah, I'm happy to talk to whoever. Like I said, this is these types of deals usually take weeks, if not months, to go through for me. So I know that there's multiple conversations. This is, it's not just a big monetary investment. To me, what I tell people all the time is this really does require sometimes a cultural shift inside the company because, you know, I just talked to one of my clients about this today is that the goal of what we're doing here is qualified pipeline, right? That's really what we want to do. But that is really a six to 12 month conversation and the buy-in that we need from really everyone in the company to understand that what we're doing here is we have to go out and create demand in the market. And it's really, really hard to do, but it's the most impactful thing that you can do. And that's when we start seeing not just leads go up, but like win rates go up, right? With sales yeah. teams. And they then have time to focus on more. I talk to my sales team about this all the time because we, we provide leads to our sales team, but I tell them all, it's not marketing's job to give you guys leads. It's your job to go get your own leads. I pay you commission, go hunt, go, go, go spearfish. You know, you have everything that you need. And when they're not calling on craft leads anymore, they then have time to actually go out and do that and build their own book of business. 
and things just flow better. And that way, the pressure and stress is kind of off marketing to be this direct marketing channel, which is diminishing returns over time because we're just making offers to people that we have to go out and do this process. So it is a massive investment, again, not just of money, but really of energy and, and commitment from the brands yeah. to really get aligned with this. Thank <laughs> you.